The next Conservative government will act to make a difference, to make Britain so unjust. It's that these people aren't even getting value for money. On the first day of that government, I will give the taxpayers of this country something they haven't had these last seven years, the neighbour from hell. Oh, no. In the first week of that government, I will make this country a desperately unfair place to live in. And in the first month of that Conservative government, I will pretend that we're going to do something. It's a sham. It's a pretense. And it means just one thing. We go forward into the next election as a party where nobody any longer trusts a word that politicians have to say. I'm going to give it to you straight. Politicians, all politicians, have made promises they've failed to keep. Now, I don't believe in that kind of talk. We will only promise what we can deliver. Dodgy facts and figures. A world where the figures are fiddled. A world where there are no penalties for failure. I'm not going to promise you a fantasy land, but the world is a very dangerous place. Let me tell you about Michael Howard. Michael is not always the easiest person to work with. He can be one of the most stubborn people that I've ever met. Not only is Michael one of the most shadowy people I've ever worked with, he will always, always put his moral vanity before his party. There are things that need to be said. Criminals, rapists, students, pensioners, hooligans, burglars, refugees, women. I ask you, is this the sort of Britain that we want? If you believe Andrew Lansley will tell us how we can ban the sale of goldfish, then you're a conservative. If you believe that David Davis will tell us how we can cut the age at which you can buy pornography, then you're a conservative. If you believe Tim Collins will tell us how we can get discipline back into our zoos, then you are a conservative. If you believe that we are the party of all Britain and all Britons, then you're really mad. Gay, we still have tears. Not so many, not so many, thank God. Most people in this country think that the Conservative Party live on another planet. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to work even longer and harder than ever before because we believe that society is millions of individual people worn to a frazzle. And we know that we will do precious little to help them. We Conservatives know that this country is the biggest care home in the world. It's time for a party to put an elderly person at the heart of its government. It's not a terribly clever policy. In my first week in office, I will put sex at the heart of government policy. As Conservatives, we say joy, love, and sex, as Eddie Hughes graphically reminded us. Ladies and gentlemen, only grandparents a single mother and two elderly sisters torn apart by bitter disputes about sex can do it. I was delighted when Michael Howard asked me to take Tony Blair home to my bed for action. I was taken deeply 66 times in many different ways. My job is to touch a great variety of politicians so they can develop their true potential. Two hours a fortnight, I put my slap on and visit hard-pressed government ministers who know best how to grind. My dream is to find ways to make Tony Blair hard, 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 hard to champion the interests of the Conservative Party. My job is to be felt up and down by Tony Blair and do it even longer and harder than ever before. I hope to retire worn to a frazzle. My message today is to remind you I'm a bad, embarrassing, disgraceful conservative. Now, as a conservative, I really fancy Oliver Letwick in the office. He's groaning under the weight of your enormous privates. I haven't got a little cock, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a tackle that hardly fits in the office. I just don't know how I came to deserve it.
and knowing Oliver Gordon Brown and Peter Mandelson as I do, they'd quite like being tied up and spoilt for choice. Do you remember how that lovely Mr. Blair and I got wasted? None other than the Prime Minister himself spent hours playing with my tackle for what a mess it all was. So far, we slashed freedom, independence, responsibility, democracy, abolished space and talent. That's good, but not good enough. So as soon as it's safe to do so, we'll cut public services. We want to stamp out choice for ordinary people. We need more materialism, class division, lies and mediocrity. They say opportunity for all, not if you want to make sense. We conservatives know, even if many sociologists don't, that safer, cleaner, healthier, more secure and better educated country. There's a threat to be deterred and an evil to be punished. We pledge in this party to bring Britain to a halt. We pledge to hurt others and we pledge to betray the law-abiding citizens. This government wanted me murdered. The reason was very simple. It's because the Chancellor of the Exchequer said he wanted my bottom. Pull the other one, Mr. Brown. I just don't want awful weight on top of me. All those bumps and humps. I want passion and power. I need a fish. German Conference. Maritime lovers. Yes, I'm back. I've got a confession to make. I've got more fish than I want, more fish than I need, and a lot more fish than I can afford. You couldn't write a parody so stupid. I cannot stand this government, and I cannot stand what they're doing to our fish. And do you remember how they said that this time round, Labour government wasn't going to regulate fishermen? And why then does the regulation say? that if the fisherman catches the wrong kind of fish, the fishermen have to be thrown back into the sea dead. 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 For this is the great cruelty of labour. Having murdered all those prawns on their cocktail offensive, none other than the Prime Minister himself strangled 700,000 fish since this government came to power. The Faroe Islands are in Iceland, free of all those regulations, and much better fish stocks with more fish landed by local trawlers and fishermen. If they catch a fish, they land it for consumption instead of adding to the problem by throwing it back. That is Labour's fish policy. It is so simple, ladies and gentlemen, that less than one in ten accidents in this country are caused by fish that are too small.